come on, church. Hallelujah. Let's thank God for this day. Amen? A new day we've never seen before, and God allowed us to be in it. Can you say, thank you, Lord? Can you say, hallelujah? Can we say, bless your God for another day's journey? Hallelujah. All of us who are able to stand, will we please stand? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds upon the people. We'll now have our morning hymn. We'll understand it by and by. Followed by the morning prayer by oh, Reverend Flossie Montgomery. A choral response, sweet, sweet spirit. And a selection by the Jubilee Choir. Praise the Lord. We are understanding it better by and by. Praise God. Let us pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, 
Father God, we come before your throne this day to say thank you. Thank you, Father God, because when we opened up our eyes this morning, Lord God, we was in our rightful mind. And we found everything in its rightful place. Father God, we say thank you. Because, Lord God, when we walked out of our doors, Lord God, hallelujah, we saw a brand new day we never seen before. We say thank you. Then, Father God, in the name of Jesus, on our way here, Lord God, Lord God, you truly kept us. Your grace and your mercy, Father God, oh, kept us from hurt, harm, and danger. Father God, we say thank you. We thank you, Father God, for allowing us to enter this Bethel spot right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, we ask your blessings today, Lord God. Upon everyone that's here, Lord God. And Lord, we are asking you, Father God, to open their hearts and their minds to receive your word today, Lord God. And Lord, after they hear your word, Lord God, we ask you to let them be doers of your holy word. So just touch right now, Lord God, because all we need from you is a touch. In the mighty name of Jesus. Then, Lord God, the man of God that's bringing forth your word, Father God. Oh, Father God, just use him. Use him on this day, Father God, as you never used him before, Lord God. Father God, I ask you, hallelujah, to take your anointing off and just pour it out. Oh, Father God, upon him and let it run, Father God, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Oh, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, just touch him right now, Father God. Touch him and use him for the glorifying of your kingdom. Lord God, that when your word come forth, somebody will cry out, what must I do to be saved? Oh, Father God, we ask you to move mightily and miraculously in this place today, Lord God. Father God, move, Father God, because somebody's here, Father God. For one thing and somebody else for another. Father God, we ask you to bless. <laughs> Hallelujah, as you never blessed before. And Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, after hearing your word and doing that which you call upon us to do, Father God. And Lord, when you call our name, Father God, we will be ready to answer you in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, we will hear your words. When you say, well done, my good and faithful servant, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you. We give you praise and we give you glory for this thing. Because truly, this is the day that you have made. Oh, Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Father God, blessing those that are sick and afflicted. Father God, asking you to do a mighty healing in the name of Jesus. Father God, just bless mightily and miraculously this day. Father God, we thank you for all you've done, for all you're doing. We thank you for what you're going to do. Come, Holy Spirit. You're welcome in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen.
with your love. Praise the Lord, everybody. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. Sit down, sir. Montgomery for the strength and conviction of her prayer. Also, Jubilee Choir, thank you so much for that selection. It was wonderful. And now we'll have welcome and recognition of visitors by Sister Letitia Benson.
sit down and rest a little while. If you're serving God, sometimes I guess you just have to sit down and rest. Give an honor to God and to our pastor and associates. Good morning. It is so good to see everybody here today because God gave us a gift. First of all, the gift of life. And we were able to get up, look out the window, see the bright sunshine. That's a good gift. So let's give ourselves and God a hand. Again, good morning to our Central Baptist Church family and those viewing by the internet. We would like to welcome you to a wonderful and awesome worship experience. Will all our visitors please stand and remain standing? Well, we record, re recognize and welcome all of our members. It is so good to see everybody here today. It is just wonderful to be in the house of God. No other place would I rather be. Sometimes the old devil, he comes in and wants to stop me, but I tell you, you better get out of my way because I don't have time for you. <laughs> Let's take note of our following upcoming events. Today is a last day for the 2015 college and high school graduates to submit their names to the education ministry. The 2015 Women, Women's Day Choir will have rehearsal on Saturday, April the 18th at 10 o'clock a.m. The Central Baptist Church family will celebrate our pastor's 18th anniversary doing our 8 and 11 a.m. worship services on next Sunday. And the Central Baptist will celebrate us on next sun Sunday, April the 19th. Love offerings are found in the back of the pew. And this is how the offering uh, envelopes look, so you can't miss it. Can't miss it at all. Our pastor has been here struggling and not really struggling, but carrying on and worshiping God with us and sharing God's love. So we need to give him love back. So please, you can start today filling out your envelopes. Report cards. Report cards for the third marking period are due. Please place the copies in the academic recognition box located in room 104 by Tuesday, April the 21st. Honor Roll Academic Recognition for the second marking period will be presented on the fourth Sunday during the 11 a.m. worship services. The Women's Ministry will sponsor an old school versus new school basketball game. The registration will be held after the, after the 11 a.m. worship services in the best view. The Education Ministry will be accepting ads for the 2014-2015 souvenir booklet. You may pick up ad forms at all entrances. The Senior Citizens Committee will sponsor a trip to Cherokee, North Carolina on Saturday, May 2nd, 2015. The cost of the trip is $35 per person. The bus will leave the church at 6 o'clock a.m. and return to Columbia at approximately 9.30 p.m. Senior citizens interested in traveling to Cherokee, North Carolina may sign up in the vestibule immediately after the 11 a.m. worship services. Today's scripture is coming from Jonah, the third chapter, verses one through four. May God richly bless each of you all day, every day. Thank you so much. to thank Sister Benson for reminding us of the announcements as well as welcome and recognition of the visitors. And now is the time where we can give back to God just a portion of what he has given to us. This is the part of service where we worship through giving. We need to be excited about that. Amen. This is a time where we can give back to our God just a portion of what he's given to us to just show him thanks for everything that he has given. 
in the book of Proverbs around the third chapter, it says this in verses 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. So what that is saying to us is that we, we need to give to God not after we've paid all of our bills and, and done everything else with our, our monies and time and talent, but give him first, because he should be first. Amen? So as you're sitting and, and considering what to give back to God, think of him first and give him the portion that he is due. Amen? Those of us who are able to stand, would you stand for the blessing of the offering in advance? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it is in the name of Jesus that we come. Lord God, first giving you thanksgiving that you've given us a new day to honor you. God, you've been so good to us, and this is our chance to show you just a little bit of how good you've been to us, and we say thank you. Lord God, we thank you for the ones who are able to give, God. We ask you that you honor their giving because they're giving it out of the love that they have for you, God, and, and we say thank you for them. God, we ask you for those to bless the ones that don't have it right now to give. But God, we know that in the future you will give and allow them to be able to have the heart to do it. And we say bless them too, God. And God, we also ask a special blessing for those who have it to give but have not reached the point that they do give to you. God, we ask you to touch their hearts right now. Touch their minds right now also, God, so they will want to give the next time that you give them opportunity. And Lord, we ask that all the giving be done for the building of your kingdom. And we ask it all in Jesus' name we pray. God, we say thank you. And we say amen. Amen. Will the two outside aisles turn and face the wall? And those that are in the inside aisles face one another and follow the direction of the ushers.
Let the church say, man, you love the Lord, say, man, again. If you know that the Lord is in the blessing business and he's blessing you not tomorrow, not later on, but that the Lord is blessing you and he's blessing you right now. Put your hands together, open up your mouth and give God a hallelujah praise in the building. Because he's worthy to be praised. Amen. Just put your hands together and praise God in the house. Because the Lord is worthy to be praised. and bless the name of God our Father Jesus our Redeemer the Holy Spirit our Comforter and our God we thank God this morning for our presiding officer the Reverend Karen Phillips we thank God for the strength the spirit and the prayer from Reverend Flossie Montgomery for the presence of Reverend Dr. Hezekiah Carpez amen we thank God today for the presence of one who I've known for a number of years uh, I knew him prior to him being called into the ministry, but I knew it would not be long before God called him because God had his hands upon him. Amen. He's always been grounded in the word and we developed a friendship down through the years. And I like his spiritual discipline. When he arrived at church this morning, he came into the office and told me, Pastor, I'm here. I'll be sitting with my family. And I won't come up, Doc, until you invite me to come up. That's spiritual discipline. Some preachers, they run places and run up and ain't nobody asking me to come up. Amen. I was trained by old preachers. It's easier to actually come up than to actually go down. Amen, somebody. So I thank God for that spiritual discipline he has shown. And when they said, well, our visitors are staying, he was getting ready to stay. And I said, you're no visitor. Don't you stay. Reverend Atterbury, we praise God for you, brother. We thank God much and mighty for you. Amen, amen. That's a sweet spirit is in this place. And I know it is the spirit of the Lord. Amen. And our announcements we heard a little bit earlier you remind you that some of the women's choir rehearsals will be on Saturday as well as on Thursday. Amen. We're trying to work it out so that sometimes you may not be able to attend one, the other one's available, but you can't go and attend none. Amen, somebody. We want to have a strong Women's Day choir, and we're looking forward. They got a great jump start on yesterday, and we have the practices coming before us. On next Sunday, I will celebrate 18 years here as pastor of the Central Baptist Church. And what would make that anniversary special if you come out and share it with me? Amen, somebody. And they have been 18 good years. Amen. I talk to pastors all the time, and they complain, and they whine, and they upset, they bitter. If I got to go through all that, I wouldn't pass them. There ought to be some joy from the pastor. There ought to be some joy from the people. Amen. So I want to thank you. You have made the 18 years very enjoyable years. Amen. There's nowhere else and no other time would I rather be pastoring than at this Central Baptist Church. I want to thank you so much. Amen. 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 And we remind you that our Senior Citizen Committee is sponsoring a trip to Cherokee, North Carolina. I think I need to touch on Cherokee a bit because inquiring minds may want to know. 
Amen. Cherokee is an Indian resort area in Cherokee, North Carolina. In Cherokee, North Carolina, they have restaurants, they have malls, they have retail, uh, retail stores, they have tours of the mountain, just a beautiful place to go. But also in Cherokee, they have a casino in Cherokee. Amen, somebody. We're not sponsoring a trip to the casino. We're sponsoring a trip to Cherokee. Can we get that clear and straight? Does everybody understand that? Amen, somebody. I went on a cruise ship. When I got off the ship, when I went downstairs, I saw slot machines on the cruise ship. Now, it's up to you whether you go to the machine. All we're doing is sponsoring the bus trip. Amen. Now, there are some places that have this package they sponsor. You spend $35 for the bus, and when you get there, they turn around and give you $35 back for you to go to the casino. We don't have no package deal. We ain't giving you no money to go back to the casino. Your $35 is paying for the bus. When we get there, we're going to drop you off in the shelter place. Now, wherever you go from the shelter is on you. Amen, somebody. We're not following you around. We're not trying to look and see. You're a, these are adults. These are senior citizens. Amen. And if they did go into the casino, they ain't going to hell. Amen, somebody. I want you to hear me loud and clear because we get stuff and we run with it. Let's run with the right thing. Amen, somebody. Matter of fact, I'm really considering going to make sure my senior's all right. Amen. So we're looking for a great time in fellowship. Amen. God is still in the blessing business. He can do any and everything but fail. Now, on April the 25th, many of our young people, they, they've sent me messages. They contacted me. We're starting our young adult choir on April the 25th. That Saturday, the same time, our youth choir meeting, our young adult choir would meet. Uh, Brother Cortland Thomas would continue to serve as youth musician for us. Stand up, Anthony. Brother Anthony Allen would direct and play for the Young Adult Choir. Amen. And the ages for the Young Adult Choir, 18 to 35 for the Young Adult Choir. If you're 36, if you're 40, if you come and you feel like a young adult, nobody's going to turn you around. Amen, somebody. I don't want an age limit to be a hindrance. If you feel young, come on. Amen. We've had 16 or 18 people who've signed up for it. Many of those are excited. I went to a church at a young adult choir, and they had an 84-year-old deacon on the choir, and he was rocking the choir. <laughs> Amen, somebody. We want to create activities that's enjoyable for our young people. Parents, if your children are working, get them off on that Saturday if they want to participate. If you come, regardless of your age, and want to be a part of it, we want you to be a part of the Young Adult Choir. I promise you, Anthony is going to do a wonderful job working with it. And from that, we'll do other things. We'll take trips. Y'all will take trips together because y'all don't want pastor going on trips with you. You'll take trips together. You'll have forums together. You'll deal with issues that concern you. So we hear you. We want to be attentive to you and direct programs that's going to help minister to you. Amen. We're looking for them. I was busy planning what I was going to do this week, and I told Cricket we were going to do some this. I forgot I'm in revival this week. So I'm in revival Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday at the uh, New Covenant Baptist Church, Pastor Doug Hudson off Humphreys Drive. On Wednesday night, we're asking for the United Voices as well as our male chorus to accompany me on Wednesday night. Some people were Pastor, I don't have direction. Come to Bible study at 6 o'clock. When we finish at 7 o'clock, we all go together. Did y'all get that? Come to Bible study. When we finish Bible study, we'll do a carpool and go over together. But it's over in the Greenview section, and we're looking forward to having a great time with Pastor Hudson this week. We continue to lift them in much prayer. Amen. Let us prepare for the reading of our scripture. And finally, let me remind you, our summer camp is starting back. They'll take registration for our summer camp. We have one of the top-rated summer camps you'll find anywhere. Amen. Amen, somebody. I mean, our summer camp and other things you have to realize with our staff, we have 
close to 90% of our staff at summer camp is degree, degreed. Amen, somebody. Uh, you really need to know more than the students you're teaching. Amen, lights. And our staff does a wonderful job. My wife, Cook, has been leading that program for close to 17 years now. They teach in the morning. And we don't want it to be a babysitting camp. They teach science in the morning. They teach math in the morning. They work on the computers. They do foreign language and whatnot along those lines. And then they do some other type of programs, field trip to different places that's educational for our young people. You can go online to our website and download the application, and they will have some application in the back after service for you to get. Amen. Let's move as we get ready for the preaching of God's word. Our scripture will be led in our reading by... Brother Larry Rump, as Brother Larry Rump come forth to lead us in the reading of our scripture, then we will have a selection by the voices of praise. Amen. After the selection by the voices of praise, Deacon Scott and Ulysses help all the choir members off the choir stand. I want to look at everybody while I'm preaching today. Amen. I want nobody behind me. I want everybody in front of me, except the musicians. Y'all be ready for the invitation. But I want to look at you when I'm preaching to you today. Amen. After Larry reads our scripture, then our selection, I will come back with the sermon for the day entitled Second Chances. Second Chances. Amen. Let us stand. Good morning, Central. Our scripture is Jonah chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. The text I'll be reading is the New International Version, and it reads as follows. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very important city. A visit required three days. On the first day, Jonah started into the city. He proclaimed, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overturned. God's word for God's people.
Thank you so much for that selection, choir. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let me take this opportunity to thank Brother Larry Romp for leading us in the reading of our scripture. From the book of Jonah, the third chapter verses 1 through 4. The book of Jonah, the third chapter, verse 1 through 4. Verse 1 says, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. I want to just talk a little while today about second chances. Second chances. Many of us today have wasted a lot of time, a lot of opportunities, and a great deal of money in our lives. We have failed in so many areas to do what God has called us to do. Yet we have so little compassion for other folks when they fail. We are quick to condemn the faults and the failures of others. We're quick to point our finger and judge someone else for their human weaknesses and their failures. Oh, can I say that again? Amen. Uh, we are quick to point our fingers and judge others for their human weaknesses and their failures. Let me say this in case you did not know it. God can deal with our weaknesses, but he have a problem with our wickedness. We have developed a spirit of condemnation, superiority, and spiritual arrogance that suggests we've never done anything wrong. We've never lied. We never fornicated. We never deceived. We never tricked anyone. We never manipulated anyone. We act if we are perfect and everybody else is in need of salvation except us. Can I talk a little while in here today? And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that we serve a God of second chances. Because if I look back over my life, if he was just a God of another chance... I would have used my another chance a long time ago. But I'm glad that he's a God of second chances. And I believe there are a few witnesses in the house that can testify to the fact that he's a God of second chances. There are a few folks in here today can testify that when I look back over my life, that the Lord has been blessing me over and over and over again because he's a God of a second chance. And I, I realized that I hadn't been all that I should be. 
but I'm glad that the Lord is not giving up on me. I'm, I'm glad that the Lord is not like man. I'm glad that the Lord looks beyond my fault, that he supplies all of my needs, that the Lord has brought me from a mighty long way. Tell your neighbor, don't hate on me. I, I know I'm not where I ought to be, but please be patient with me because the Lord is not through with me yet. Can I get a witness in here? There's somebody here today that you know that we serve a God of second chances. Uh, you know the Lord has been blessing you over and over, been, been making a way for you, been opening doors, been lifting burdens, been lifting bow down heads. And that's why I have to praise him for not what God is doing for me right now, but I got to praise him for what the Lord has already done and what the Lord has already brought me, how the Lord has already blessed me. I wish I had somebody that's bold enough and worship today. They said the devil is a liar. I serve a God, not just a God of another chance, but a God of second chance. Uh, I'm talking about a God of second chances here. Uh, when I was growing up in that great, wonderful city of Fort Valley, Georgia, my senior year in high school, I was pitching in a ball game. And see, what I would try to do is to set the batter up when I got ready to pitch. I would first start off with a fastball because I knew he wasn't ready for it. Then he'd get up on the edge of the plate to try to get ready for the fastball, and I'd drop a curveball on him. And then he'd slide back, and I'd come with a slider on the inside. Then I'd hit an umpire say, three strikes, and you're out. So in baseball, three strikes, and you're out. In basketball, if you get six fouls, you're out. In football, if you have unspokesmanlike conduct, you're out. In the South Carolina penal system, if you have three felonies and some extenuating circumstances, you got the three-strike law and you're out. I'm so glad my God is not like the basketball team. I'm glad he's not like the baseball team. I'm glad he's not like the football team. I'm glad he's not like the legal system because I'd have lost my three strikes a long time ago. But he keeps right on blessing. Anybody glad that God keeps right on blessing? Is there anybody here that know that you're here today? Not because you've been so good, not because you had messed up, not because you haven't done wrong, but we serve a God of second chance. Anybody know that you don't deserve to be here, that you could have been dead sleeping in your grave, but God gave you another chance. How many know you don't deserve to be here, but how many can thank God for his grace, thank God for his mercy, because we serve a God of second chances. Ah, he's a God of second chances. There are many times that I've let God down. But there's never been a time that God has let me down. There have been many times I've failed God. But there's never been a time that God has failed me. And that's why I'm thankful today. That's why I wanted to remind the church family we serve a God of second chances. I don't care where you are right now. I don't care what you're going through right now. I don't care how heavy your load is right now. I don't care how heavy the burden is right now. I stop by to tell you we serve a God of second chances. And that's good news right there. Because we serve a God of second chances. Even when I messed up, God was still right there with me. That's why I don't have to wait to come out of anything. To give God a hallelujah praise. I can praise God in the midst of what I'm going through. Because this is not my first rodeo with the law. He's been there for me in the past. He's there for me in the present. He'll be there for me in the future because he's a God of second chances. There are some folks won't let you forget any mistake you made. Some folks will remind you of all the things you've done in your life. But I'm glad today that I serve a God that looks beyond my fault and supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory. And he is truly worthy to be praised. See that person sitting on your row, they don't know what you're going through. That person sitting next to you, they don't know how you're fighting back tear. That person sitting on your road. Don't realize the battles that you've been going through. They don't know what you had to deal with just in order to get here. So if you made your way here and you made your way in the Lord's house, it's a good time to praise him and thank him for allowing you to be here because God has been that good to him. Does anybody know that we serve a good God and that he's worthy to be praised? Do I have a witness in here? Does anybody know that no matter where you are right now that you don't have to stay right where you are that God can bring you out of 
right where you are. And God can give you another chance. Somebody shout second chance. Eh? Somebody shout second chance. Eh? Shout it like you mean it. Shout it till you feel it. Shout second chance. Eh? I dare you to make the devil mad. Shout second chance. Eh? You thought you had me, but I got another chance. You thought me had me down, but I got another chance. You thought you'd keep it. Second chance. Eh? Jonah in our text teaches us that we are not perfect, that failure is a part of human condition. Let me say that again. We're not perfect. Failure is a part of human condition. That life includes failure. God does not write us off even if we like Jonah go in the wrong direction. Even though there are some times that we're stubborn, sometimes we're hard-headed, sometimes we want to do things our own way. We serve a God of second chances. Let us examine our text if we don't mind. If we're going to open up this text, let's go to Jonah first of all, the first chapter, verse 1 through 3. Let's open it up. Let's go to Jonah, the first chapter, verse 1 through 3. Look at it. It's on the screen for you. You haven't gotten to it. It said, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, said. That's the first time. Right? It said, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cried against it, for that wickedness has come up before me. But see, Jonah had his own plan. But Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, and he went down into it to go with them into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. The Lord told Jonah to go one way. Jonah had made up his mind to go another way. The Lord told Jonah to do one thing, but Jonah made up his mind to do another thing. Jonah said, I know you told me to go to Nineveh, but I don't want to go to Nineveh. The people at Nineveh are not worth saving. These are some awful people. Lord, you know the things that they have done. The people at Nineveh, when they capture you, they, they punch, they gauge your eyes out. The people at Nineveh, what they do is take a pole and stick it to you to come from one side to the next side. The people at Nineveh would burn you up alive. The people at Nineveh would kill all children. The people at Nineveh are vicious, they are cruel, and they are not worth saving. And what God was telling Jonah that everybody is worth saving. No matter how bad they are, that they are still worth saving. You know why I can shout about it? That's good news for me. And that ought to be good news for you. If God can save folks like the Ninevites, then God can save you and me. If God can save folks who do dirty and low down things, then God can save you and me. To the truth of the matter, we haven't always been in church at all our lives. We've done some things we're not proud of, but God still is a God of second chance. See, sometimes we get in church and walk around with a halo over our head, like we've been heavenly bound all of our lives. And sometimes we turn our all ecclesiastical nodes up at folk like they don't deserve what they're but I stop by to tell you no matter who you are that God can still save that regardless of your situation that God still saves that I don't know about you but there was a time I wasn't fit to live and there was a time I wasn't ready to die there was a time I had no God on my side there was a time I had no heaven in my view but I'm so glad that God gave me another chance because he's a God of second chance. And I believe, I got a few witnesses here today, that you can celebrate you in the Lord's house because you could have been in jail somewhere. You can celebrate you in the Lord's house because you could have been dead somewhere. You can celebrate you in the Lord's house because you could have lost your mind. You can celebrate you in the Lord's house because you could have done something crazy. So you better tell your neighbor, look at me if you're crazy like a wanna, but I know what I've done and I know where the Lord has brought me from. I know how to Lord has kept me. I know how the Lord has never left me. If you don't think I'm going to praise him, just watch me and hold my mule because I know how good the Lord has already been. Yeah, my brothers and sisters. That's the first time the word came to Jonah. And Jonah was disobedient. I want you to remember this that God is more concerned about his workers than he's concerned about their work. Can I say that again? God is more concerned about his workers than he's concerned about their work. For if the workers are what they ought to be, then the work will be what it should be. 
Throughout Jonah's time of rebellion, God was displeased with his servant, but he never once deserted him. That's good news there. Even though God may be displeased and disappointed with me sometimes, he never leaves me alone. It was God who controlled the storm. It was God who prepared the great fish that rescued Jonah from the deep. His promise is, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. When you pass through the waters, I will be with him. Now, when we go to the third chapter, and verse number one, we see where it said, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. Why the second time? Because it's a God of second chances. The word came to Jonah the second time right now. In other words, Jonah, I love you so much, but you didn't listen to me. You became disobedient, but you're a child of mine. Because you're a child of mine, I'm coming back to you the second time. Because I'm a God of second chance. What are you saying, Pastor? The message did not sing. Uh, in, in, in the third chapter, the second verse, look what he told Jonah. He told Jonah, I want you to rise and go unto Nineveh. What did he tell Jonah in the first chapter? I want you to rise and go unto Nineveh. The message did not sing, change. The message was the same. In other words, Jonah, I've given you an assignment, and you haven't completed your assignment. You can't go anywhere until you deal with the original assignment that I've already given you. What are you saying, Pastor? The Lord told me to tell somebody before he gets ready to elevate you, you need to complete the sign, man, that God has already given you. Some of us are trying to go forward, but we're running from stuff in our past. You got to deal with your past and deal with your stuff if God is going to elevate you. Some of us are trying to leave Nineveh. and Some of us are trying to leave Tasha, but we're trying to do it without going to Nineveh. God said, go back to Nineveh. It's hard to move on to a new love when you still got feelings for your old love. Y'all ain't feeling me here. You got to go back to what you're trying to run from. You can't run from the alcohol bottle. You can't run from the drug pipe. You got to go back to your situation. Deal with your stuff. Handle your stuff and trust God and see where God will lead you. Great Lord have mercy. That made me feel good. Okay, Lord have mercy. Uh, the, the assignment didn't change. Lord still told him to go back and go to Nineveh. Well, there are three reasons why God is a God of a second chance. I won't hold you long. First reason, because of his grace. G-R-A-C-E. God's redemption at Christ's expense. We're talking about his grace. Amazing grace. Is my song of praise. I'm talking about his grace. See, grace is not getting what you deserve. That's what grace is. But grace is getting what you don't deserve. That's how God grace works. Well, I'm reminded of a story of a little boy outside playing with a baseball bat, hit the ball with the bat, knocked it through the window, Deacon O'Berry, of the car and broke the glass out of his mother's car, grandmother's car. Grandmother was in the kitchen. Grandmama was baking a cake. She saw what the little boy had done. The little boy came in the house, tears in his eyes. The little boy went right to the room where he knew the switch was being kept. See, back in the day, we had to go get our... And if it was too small, you would do what? Some of y'all were raised like I was raised. Uh, uh, okay. And they'll twist them together to really get the full impact with the switch. Now, I don't suggest y'all do like my mom and daddy in Fort Valley, Georgia. It would be called child abuse in the present day. See, children get beat with clothes on now. And John and Lucius, easy at house, the clothes had to come off. So you can feel the pain of the beating. So the boy went back and got the switch. The boy came up and put his hand up against the wall in position to get ready to get his beating. Grandmama said, son, I saw what you did. You came in the house, you owned up to what you did. You went back there and you got the switch and you're in position because you know you deserve a beating. I wish I had a little help. 
you know you deserve a beating. Grandmama, at that time, had put the cake in the oven. Had the residue from the leftover cake bake stuff in the bowl. She knew the boy loved to lick the spoon. With the residue left in the spoon. So grandmama called him over and said, lick this spoon. He licked this spoon and his eyes lit up. He said, grandmama, take that taste so good. Grandmama knew something about grace. Grandmama said, you deserve a beat. But you're getting something you don't deserve. That's what God's grace is. Can I get a witness in hell? We deserve to have died, but Jesus went to Calvary. We get what we do not deserve. That's how grace works on our head. Second Corinthians 12 and 9 said, he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly thereof will I glory in my infirmity, that the power of Christ may be upon me. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. Our God is a God of second chance. What a marvelous, what a wonderful thing that God will give you a second chance. And he will give you more than that. He's given me at least a dozen or more chances. He's long-suffering and patient. He's not willing to can write. Then any should perish. If you're a child of God, he's going to hold on to you. And you can be sure of that. Well, Deacon Bronson, after the way Jonah had stubbornly refused to obey God's voice, it's a marvel that the Lord spoke to him at all. See, remember now, Deacon Anson and Scott, that Jonah had turned his back on God's word. So the Lord had been the force to speak to him through thunder, through rain, and a storm, you see. I stop by to tell you every time a problem come in your life, don't look at it as something bad. God can be just speaking to you. And he's using that problem just to get your attention. Ah, uh, Deacon Bronson, but now Jonah had confessed his sin. He had turned his back on the Lord. God will once again speak to him through the word. Don't you remember that Jonah got on the ship? Whenever he was leaving the presence of the Lord, he found himself going down the Joppa. When you go down to leave the Lord, you're going down the Joppa, down in the bottom of the boat, and then found down in the belly of the fish. Can I get a witness in here? Well, see, now we found out that trouble came when he got on the ship. Uh, a storm came up. Water flooded the ship. Everybody else on the ship panicked. They realized that Jonah was the problem. Well, Jonah said, throw me overboard. But even when Jonah was thrown overboard, the Lord had customized a fish to take care of Jonah. When he threw Jonah overboard, I stopped by to tell you whatever you need, that God will supply it for you. Well, you don't have to read very far in the Bible to discover that God forgives his servant and he restores them unto ministry. Can I get a witness in here? Well, Deacon Whitmore, I've learned that we don't have the right to look down upon anybody. Because my Bible tells me in Romans 3 and 10 that there's none righteous. No, not one. I don't care how much you come to church. I don't care how much you sing on the choir. I don't care how much you pay your tithe. I don't care how much you do your day. There's none righteous. Romans 3, 23 says all have sinned and come short of the glory. It didn't say y'all have sinned, but it's all have sinned and come short of the glory. Romans 5 and 8 says, but God commended his love toward us. And that yet while we were yet sinners, that Christ died for us. First John 1, 8 through 10 and say, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us up from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Well, I stop by to tell somebody, no matter how encouraging these examples may be unto you, we must realize that there's never an excuse for us to go out and sin. The person who says I can go ahead and sin because I know the Lord will forgive me has no understanding of the awfulness of sin, not the holiness of God. But there is forgiveness, my brothers and sisters. But you can be best assured that God in his grace forgives our sin. But God in his government determines that we shall reap what we shall sow. 
and the harvest can be very costly. Oh, Jonah paid the price, but I stopped by to tell you, it was because of God's grace. And I don't know how you feel today, but I thank God for his grace. I don't know how you feel today, but I thank God for his grace and his mercy. Do I have a witness in hell? Yes, he's a God of a second chance. Not because I deserve it, but because he's a God of grace. I don't know about you, but I've messed up along the way. I've gone some places I should not have gone. I've had some thoughts I should not have had. But I thank God for his grace. Do I have anybody here who thank God for his grace? That he didn't have to do it, but the Lord did it. I thank God for his grace. Do I have anybody here that will throw your hand up in the air and tell God, thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank God for grace. Second chances. The reason we get second chances, first of all, because of his grace. And second, because of his faith. Hmm? Favor, according to the Hebrew, is a mystery of grace and kindness. William Murphy had it correct when he said grace and favor are working together. They're working together for our good. Watch this. Be careful of sitting around up under some crazy teaching. You are intelligent beings. Any and everybody ought not to be able to tell you anything. And you go accept it for yourself. One of our beliefs as Baptist believers is a priesthood of Baptist believers. That we have direct access to him for ourselves. Preacher can preach all they want. I can read the Bible for myself. Huh? Huh? I don't get mad if I can't catch Reverend Ezell to come pray for me. I can pray for myself. So here, be careful of of, of bad teaching. Bad teaching will make you think that material possessions are the result of favor. Don't miss that. They'll make you think because you have more stuff than somebody else has, it means that you have more favor from God. Watch it now. Favor is not the result of good behavior. For the scripture says we are saved by grace through faith and not by our work, lest any man should boast. Favor is not manifested by accumulation. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Favor comes from God. Ricky Ray Ezell doesn't have any favor that he can give. Favor comes from God. And just because you have more than I have doesn't mean that God favors you more than God favors me. Favor comes from God. Can I get a witness in here? You got these pronosticators of doom, uh, uh, gloom and doom to tell you, as long as you come to my church and stay up under my covering, then sickness won't visit your house. That's crazy. If you keep on living long enough, sickness going to invade everybody's house. Twenty-some years ago, when we bought our home and there are 13 steps from the first level to the second level, I used to run, skip, and jump them to get up there. Twenty-some years later, I'm holding on to the rail. Every step I take. Twenty-some years ago, Deacon Clark William, I could go up and down the court, run full court all day long. I can't make it a half court right now. If you just keep on living long enough, some things will change in your life. I uh, stop by to tell you that it's because of God's favor uh, that he can tell Jonah to go to the Ninevite. I know they're bad. I know the things that they've done. But you have favor. When you have favor, you can tell the Ahabs of the world what does say the Lord. When you have favor, you can tell the, Nic- the Nebuchadnezzar of the world, if it be so, the God whom we serve is able to deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, we still refuse to bow. 
I stopped by to tell you when you have favor, you don't have to be afraid of what's before you. Because if God be for you, he's more than the world he is against you. When you have favor, we can say we're more than him that love us through him that conquers. When you have favor, when you have favor, you can say all things work together for the good of them that love the law, who are called according to his purpose. So I stop by to tell you today, you don't know how blessed you are to have the favor of God. You better tell somebody, I may not have the B-series, I may not have the Bentley, I may not have the Ben or the BMW, but I got King Jesus, and I got favor in my life that I have a witness in hell you better tell somebody my house may not be big as your house but I'm not worried about my house down here cause in my father's house a mini mansion if it were not so I would have told you so I wish I had some witness in hell that can praise God here tell him I may not wear a designer suit like you wear it but I'm gonna take off my suit I'm gonna put on my long white robe now do I have anybody here that'll praise God like y'all talk you better tell him I may not have diamonds like you have, but I know that when I get there, I can go to the jewelry store. I can put on my long slipper. It's not anybody here that love my Jesus. It's not anybody here that love my Lord. It's not anybody here. So I may be struck right now, but I still got favor. My money's funny, but I still got favor. My credit gets jacked up and whacked up, but I still have favor. Let me press it to the close now. If you leave here with nothing today, I want you to just remember that you uh, serve a God of second chances. Chances is plural. I didn't say a God of a second chance. I said a God of second chances. Ah, because of his grace. Because of his faith. And finally, I want you to know that he's in the restoration business. God's desire is to restore his children in their rightful place, what they should be doing. The first time when Jonah heard, he said, sail for Tosh, which was not according to the word of God. Now he's going to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days. And yet he declared, 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Throughout the scripture, the number 40 seems to be identified with testing of judgment. During the time of Noah, it rained 40 days and 40 nights. The Jewish spies explored Canaan 40 days. And the nation of Israel was set in the wilderness for 40 years. The giant Goliath turned the arm of Israel for 40 days. And the Lord gave the people none of them 40 days to repent. Repent from their wickedness. I stopped by to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, that I'm so glad that we serve a God of second chances. Do I have a witness in here? I must confess that my life has not like, been like all of your life. All of your lives, you've never done anything wrong. You never made any mistakes. You've been holy from day one. But for the rest of us who had to struggle just a little bit, I want to thank God for being a God of second chances. Can I get a witness in here? See, sometimes I don't always have it together. I, when, I, when he told me to go left, I went right. When he told me to go right, I went left. But I'm glad that he never gave up on me. Anybody praying with me right now? Because we serve a God of second chances. Somebody here ought to be glad about it. There are some people in your life have cut you off a long time ago. But when they walked out, he walked right in. And he's still a God of second chances. I don't know how you feel, but I have to praise him for being a God of second chances. Yes, my brothers and my sisters. When I came to South Carolina from Fort Valley, Georgia, I stayed in a place called Eastway Park. Eastway Park is located off Bluff Oak. Can I get a little help in here? Well, my next door neighbor was a man by the name of Mr. Buzzback. There at Eastway Park. 
Well, Mr. Busby had a pickup truck, and Mr. Busby used to go around the neighborhood, and Mr. Busby would collect what everybody else was throwing away. Y'all have a witness in here. And Mr. Busby would come back and get in his backyard, and he'd start sanding old furniture down. He'd start polishing old furniture up, and Mr. Busby would make it look like it was brand new. And then Mr. Busby would have a yard sale, and people would come down and pay top dollar for the furniture Mr. Busby had out there. I asked Mr. Busby, where did you get this from? He said, I found this in the back of the road off old dirt road. Somebody threw it away and didn't have any use for it. But he said, I want to tell you, I find my best work to restore that somebody else has thrown away. Something went off in me right now because that's how our Lord and Savior is. He'll take the worst that somebody else has thrown away. And God is in the restoration business. Because he is the God of a second chance. Do I have a witness in hell? I wish I had somebody to pray with me now. Now go ahead and close this word out. Is there anybody here that know that you're here today because he's a God of second chance? And I don't know how you feel, but I'm glad about it. Can I call the road before I take my seat? Somebody shout, call the road, Reverend. Can I call the road before I take my seat? I didn't hear you in here. Somebody shout, call the road, Reverend. I'm glad you said it. I'm getting ready to call the road right now. There was a woman caught in the very act of adultery because he's a God of second chances. Well, the men brought her before Jesus and said the woman had been caught in the very act. Somewhere they caught her at the place where they'll leave the light on for you. Some of you know it as a Motel 6. I wish I just had a little help in here. And they brought the woman before Jesus. And then Jesus stooped down and started writing on the ground. And Jesus said, those who are among you who have not sinned, I want you to cast the first stone. Ah, and then they said, they looked around. And everybody started to leave. And Jesus said, well, thou accuser. The woman said, I don't see them. And so Jesus told her to go and sin no more. What are you saying, Pastor? Central, when you get to point your finger at folk who fell down along the way, I'm going to ask you, where is your stone? If you have not sinned yourself, then you got the right to stone somebody else. But if you committed any sin in your life, then you need to put your stone up. There was a woman at the well. This woman at the well met Jesus at the well and said that Jesus told her, go home and get your husband. The woman said, I had five husbands before. And Jesus said, the one that you're shacking up with. I'm sorry, y'all don't like that. The one that you're alternative living with. That he is not your home. Can I get a witness in here? The woman said, thou must be a prophet. The woman ran in the city and said, come see a man that told me all things I ever did. Well, the woman at the well got a second chance. Well, Noah was a drunk, but the Lord still gave him a second chance. Abraham was a liar. Moses was a murderer. Jacob was a trickster. David and Bathsheba had an affair. David stole another man's wife. Solomon and Samson had too many wives. Jeremiah was a crybaby. Thomas doubted him. Peter denied him. And Judas betrayed him. But the Lord still gave them another chance. Your name might not be Thomas. Your name might not be Peter. Your name might not be Abraham. But you ought to be able to praise God. Because God has given you a second chance to I have anybody here no, nobody but the law that's giving you a second chance I ought to have some praises in here that I thank the Lord because he's a God of a second chance is there anybody here that's ever been sick and the Lord has healed your body that's another chance for you to go out and praise the Lord anybody here been laid off from your job and the Lord bless you with another job that's another chance for you to praise the Lord anybody here been down and the Lord has picked you up that's another chance for you to praise the Lord anybody here had a door closed on 
you and the Lord opened another door that's another chance for you to praise the Lord anybody child been on drugs and the Lord has delivered your child that's another chance for you to praise the Lord I wish I had somebody who know that you're here today because the Lord has given you another chance you ought to praise the Lord but this day that the Lord has made somebody ought to tell him thank you thank you for another chance tell the Lord thank you thank you for another chance thank you for healing my body thank you for making a way thank you for wiping away tears I dare you to praise him right where you are tell somebody on your road look to your neighbor and say another chance that the Lord has given me tell him this is the day that the Lord had made I will rejoice and I will be glad in it can you just go ahead and praise the Lord and praise the Lord right where you are oh I wish I had a few leapers in here who don't mind praising God if the Lord been good to anybody can you just jump right where you are if the Lord has made a way can you jump right where you are I wish I had a few leapers in here don't worry about the arthritis if you're leaping for the Lord he'll take your pain away I wish I had some praise warrior in here can you just jump right where you are and tell the Lord thank you for every jump Thank you for this day. Thank you for my life. Just jump right where you are. Get closer to your neighbor and do the double jump and the bump at the same time. And give God praise and give God glory. I wish I had somebody here. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here that'll praise my God? Throw your hands up in the air. Throw them up in the air and tell God thank you. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Lord, say yes, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. I dare you to jump. Can I jump for you? Can I jump for you? Can I jump? I dare you to jump. Is there anybody here that'll jump for the Lord? Is there anybody here that'll leap for the Lord? Is there anybody here that'll dance for the Lord? Is there anybody here that'll give him praise? Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here? Ain't no home. Ain't no home. You got another chance. Tomorrow, it's not promised, but I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him right now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do what you do. He's worthy. 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 Go ahead. Oh, I hear the war cry in here. Go ahead and call him. Go ahead and call him. I can't hear you do your war cry. Grab somebody on your row by the hand and tell them this praise is for you. Grab somebody by the hand and tell them this praise is for you. Grab somebody by the hand. Tell them this praise is for you. Tell them this shout is for you. Tell them this jump is for you. Grab somebody by the hand. Just go ahead and bounce with them right where you are. Y'all used to bounce in the nightclub. You might as well bounce right now. Go ahead and bounce. Make this your happy hour. Somebody said I heard Central Baptist was a loud church. I told him I sure hope so. 
it's going to be loud in heaven when all the saints get together and give God praise. So we're just doing a dress rehearsal down here. We praise him down here like we're going to praise him up there. Praise him down here like you're going to praise him up there. Somebody says, Central don't know when to stop. Tell them ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. When you praise him, just open your mouth. Say, second chance. Second chance. Second chance. Turn to your neighbors and second chance. Tell them I'm praising for you right now. Because I see another chance coming for you. It's finna happen for you. Come on, let's get a praise party coming. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Pat your feet while you do it. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Let's go back to Science Alley. Let's go back to Hugo Street before we got all this carpet on the floor. Come on, praise him.
If I can't say a word Can I just wave my hand If I can't say a word Can I just wave my hand Can I just wave it, wave it, can I wave it, can I wave it, oh, oh, oh. God's been just that, that good, can I get one witness, God's, he's been just that that good if I can't say one word Lord I'm gonna wave my hand if I can't say one word Lord I'm gonna wave my hand Can I just wave it? 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 Oh, oh, oh. God's been just that, that good. Can I get one witness? God's been. Just that, that good. If I can't say a word, can I wave my hand? If I can, no, 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 say one word. Father, I'm going to raise my hand, yeah, oh, if I cannot say one word, I'm going to wave it, I'm going to wave it, God's been just that, yeah, yeah, that good, can I get one witness all oh, 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 oh. God's been just that good, good, so good, just that good. He's been good, he's been good, so good. Just that good, so good, just that good, oh yeah, brought me from a mighty long way, he's been so good, oh yes he has, yeah, yeah. He picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on a solid ground. Wow! I gotta thank him. Wow! Oh, said I gotta praise him. Oh, he delivered my soul from a burning hell. Oh, yes, he did. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I honor you, Jesus. For you've delivered me 
from cocaine. Lord, I thank you, Lord. Now my life is the stain. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. For you brought me out with title down. Oh, yeah. You've been so good. You've been so good. Yeah. Oh. God's been just that. Good. Anthony, keep Can I just keep get one with me? Go ahead, tell me one yeah. thing. God's been just that good. Can I get one with me? Yeah. God's been just that good. Can we all just say that all over the house? Whoa. Yeah, God's been just that good. Can I get a witness? Yeah, God's been just that good. While, while we're standing, while we're standing, while we're standing, proud to extend the invitation to Christian. Let us all stand who's able to stand while we're standing. Let me tell you, the church has to be about the things they say they are going to do. If anybody ought to give second chances, ought to be the church. If anybody gives second chances, it ought to be the church. You heard Brother Anthony Iden that he was singing how the Lord had delivered him. It's public knowledge. It's not private information. Anthony fell back in the Isha area that the Lord had delivered him from. Because we have human weaknesses ourselves. But when he fell back, the church went and got him help. It's easy to talk about.